Hello everybody, Ryan here, or Eleanor Productions, and today I'm taking a look at the LEGO Harry Potter 75948 Hogwarts Clock Tower. In the US, this set releases, or released depending on when you're watching this, on July 1st, 2019 for 90 US dollars, which I think is a pretty fair price given that it has 922 pieces and 8 minifigures. The 8 minifigures included are Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Fleur Delacour, Cour, who I am probably butchering, Cedric Diggory, Victor Crumb, Albus Dumbledore, and Madame Maxine. So four of the eight characters here, Harry Potter, Fleur Delacour, Victor Crumb, and Cedric Diggory, are all actually seen in the Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge set, just all in different outfits. So that's kind of a neat crossover between sets. Again, their outfits are completely different in this set. The box art features the clock tower kind of on its own, with Hogwarts in the background. You see all the figures kind of out front with tables and a Christmas tree or a tree with snow on it, I suppose, with a star on the top. And all the figures are just kind of mingling with each other, which is kind of neat. Moving to the back side of the box, though, is where we'll, of course, see all the actual features and the inside of the clock tower. It's kind of like a dollhouse concept where you have a displayable front side and then a very, very playable interior, which is kind of the point of this set. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. And if you're interested, in any of the other Lego Harry Potter 2019 sets. You'll find reviews of all of them on my YouTube channel. I'll link a playlist for the Lego Harry Potter 2019 set reviews in the description below, or you can find it on the end screen as an end card. Anyway, let's take a look at the minifigures. We shall start with Harry Potter, for whom they have a very nice hairpiece for. I don't think I can say enough good things about that. He's got his typical scar and typical face with a pretty typical Harry Potter smile. He has a regular Harry Potter brown wand. And I must say, the new wands that they came out with last year are awesome. These wands are incredible. I've known nothing but these, but I know that the older wands were not quite as good. They just used, like, the Lego Star Wars lightsaber piece, and not that great. Anyway, his torso is a really nice print. Love the real dress-up feel he has there with the bow tie on top and the back print is pretty simplistic yet uh, you know nothing out of the ordinary you'll find regular mid legs for him I forgot to show you Harry's second face. That's what it looks like. Here's Ron Weasley. He's got a pretty sheepish smile on him. He's got kind of Christmassy colors for his torso print there with a little green and red. And then, of course, kind of an ugly looking brown there. Uh, I mean, it's the regular Lego brown, but the pattern on his shirt makes it look ugly. That's what I'm trying to say. His back print, same pattern. Doesn't look that great. Also like a red little necklace or something on him. He has a pretty standard Ron Weasley hair piece. Kind of looks like the... Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi hairpiece, or it probably is. And then if we flip that around to the back, you're going to see he does have a second face, which is a little bit more unhappy looking than the first one, even though the first one isn't even the most happy looking. It's just kind of like, I'm kind of happy. Should I be happy? Here is Hermione, and she is quite a departure from what we usually see with Hermione, and they make a very weird use of the 1x2 brick, this time making it into her legs. And uh, I must say, I'm not a huge fan of this look. Uh, the 1x2 brick with the 1x2 plate underneath just doesn't work for Lego minifigure legs. Um, I, I don't know what else to say about that. Her torso print and the back print, the print in general is very nice. Just an incredible amount of detail and I guess as much realism as you can get on a minifigure. Also an awesome hairpiece. I just, it's very distracting the shape of this figure. Kind of reminds me of the old Lego minifigures, like the original ones that didn't have uh, the same posable legs. If you guys kind of get, kind of see that shape, I, that's what I kind of see here. If we take her hair piece off and flip it around, you'll see she does have a very angry looking face there. But yeah, I, now I can't get it out of my head. This looks like one of the OG Lego minifigures. Here is Albus Dumbledore, and he is really dang awesome. Obviously new for 2019 here. Plenty of printing found on him. He has an awesome hat, hair, all in one piece on top here, along with his beard piece underneath his head and above his torso there. That's where it connects up. His prints on his legs are really good. You can see the front and the back side there. And then even on his actual torso, he's got some very nice prints. He also does have two faces. There's his second face and his first face around front. You can kind of see uh, what that would look like with the beard covering it if we move it like that. Give you a better idea. And there's the back side there of the other face that was just being covered by the beard. And that is what the torso looks like underneath. So that's the full Albus Dumbledore experience for 2019. Let's get him put back together. We have a very, very pretty Fleur Delacour name butchered minifigure. 
plain uh, gray legs, but the torso print is very nice. Kind of wish they had continued that print down. I'm not sure if it does look like that in the movie, but it would have been nice. Once again, Lego's printing messed up there. You can see kind of the pale whiteness of the what is supposed to be tan print for her chest there. So I am once again disappointed. Lego fix your prints. She has a very nice blonde hair piece and she does have a second face. Again, that is also supposed to be color matching tan instead of it just looks like a washed very, very washed tan. It looks awful. And for those of you who think I continue to complain about this for no reason, it clearly is supposed to be full tan. You can even see it there on the box even bigger there. It is not supposed to be this washed out tan color that we're getting. It's supposed to be tan. It looks terrible. Here's your Victor Crumb minifigure, obviously with a different torso than the other set that we saw him in, the Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge. Looks very, very cool here though. I like this figure. Very clean look with the red and the black. If we pull his little hair piece off here, you'll see that he does, like all the other figures, have a second and much angrier looking face. Diggory here looks pretty close to Harry Potter actually, kind of similar outfits there, just slightly different, uh, slightly different prints. Even the back print actually is going to be very close to being exactly the same now that I look at it. But yeah, very nice hair piece for him. He's got a regular brown wand and if we remove the hair piece, his smile I'm sure will turn into a much angrier look. Oh, what do you know? It's an angry face. A lot of angry characters in this set. I mean, one half of them is happy, but uh, when you flip them around, they look pretty dang angry, which I guess could be the whole look you can have for all the figures if you want. And finally, we have Madame Maxime, and you're probably wondering why the camera just moved a significant amount and why she looks awkward. Well, that's because she's taller than all the minifigures. If you look at Albus Dumbledore, she's it's kind of like the three tall Woody that we used to have, although they don't make Woody 3 tall anymore, even though they did it for this character. So that's no excuse, Lego. Make Woody 3 tall again, hashtag. Anyway, yeah, this character looks great. They gave her the full print on the front side. My only complaint about this character is that the leg piece isn't an actual leg piece. It's just a Lego piece, which is a little bit of a shame. This typically tends to pop off a lot when they are like this with just the studs. But for the most part, if you're not using it a lot, it's going to be okay. The back print is very nice, very beautiful looking dress there. Her wand looks nice. She has what is, in my opinion, the ugliest Lego hairpiece for any character. If you are given this hairpiece, you are just the ugliest of the ugly, apparently. Anyway, if we take this off, you can see her very, like, concerned looking face will turn into one of much, uh, maybe a little bit more happiness. She still has enough wrinkles to make her still look kind of sad and dreary like she does on the front side. But those are all eight minifigures. Great selection overall. Great exclusive character prints for all of these. It would be wrong of me not to show you that this set does combine with both the Whomping Willow set and the Great Hall set to create one mega Hogwarts. Now, this is something that obviously started in 2018 and might even continue into 2020 and beyond. I'll have a separate video showing all three of these sets combined, but I figured I'd show you what they show you in the instruction manual of the clock tower here. Here is the full clock tower in all of its glory, as well as, I guess, a couple of icy accessories for, I believe, the Yule Ball is the name of the dance that they were having. But something I will note right off the bat, something that you're probably rather interested in, is how this connects to other sets and whether or not the design of it is still in line with the others, being that it is a year later between the Whomping Willow, the Great Hall, and this set. The three sets can combine. I'll be doing a separate video on that. But there is, unfortunately, one thing that has changed as far as design philosophy goes, and that's here at the very top. And unfortunately, you'll see that they go straight from the big cone to the rod at the top or the ski pole, like a uh, sand green ski pole. On the Great Hall, they had a cone in between there. So we're kind of losing that on, I mean, it, it does seem like a small change, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like this in the real world of Harry Potter or whether or not a lot of people are even going to care about this. Basically, I don't know if it's a big deal or not that there are some slight design changes. Some people did comment this to me and I was like, huh, well, I'll definitely keep my eye on that. But yeah, there does seem to be like a small difference as far as that goes. Let me know what you guys think about that one in the comments section below. There's also a lot more dark tan on this set, but maybe that's accurate. Anyway, we have like the little entrance to the clock tower. Up above that, we just have a bunch of graded windows, which actually look pretty cool, like the theming of that. And then up even higher, we have the actual clock, which is a printed piece on the inside of a dish. Looks very nice. And then actually like a smaller clock, but yeah, we'll play around with that there in a minute. The roof of the clock tower is a very well-designed piece of art here. We actually have it on some different hinges and really creating some weird angles to get it to work, but it does work, and it's actually very, very nice looking, so props to LEGO and whoever designed this. As far as the rest of the exterior goes, it's more of the same kind of theming with even the same kind of stickers that we see on the other sets. 
You see those brick stickers there, very, very similar, if not exactly the same. So no real complaints as far as that goes. But yeah, that is all the exterior. Like it's pretty straightforward. You can just look at it and get an idea. The fun stuff is on the inside. So picking this up as a breeze, it's all kind of pretty well held together. You can see some Technic pins there on the side for connecting it to the other sets to help make up a giant Hogwarts play set. If you do have them, you can do that. There is, we'll start out with this because I think it's one of the coolest features is that you can actually make the clock on the front side turn. So by turning knob here or whatever, it will also turn the clock on the front side, which is a really cool feature. So that is definitely very well integrated. It can be a little bit distracting. It's a little bit out there compared to everything else as far as design goes, but it's still there. It's nicely tucked away enough. At the very top here, we have the hospital wing, so we can actually place minifigures down onto the beds if we want. Maybe Ron's a little sick. We can place him on there. His feet are going to go right on the end there, and he actually fits in there very nicely considering he has mid legs. I believe a character with regular length legs is going to be a little bit more awkward looking, but the mid legs actually look very nice. They even have the partitions there between the two patrons. I, I don't know, patrons is not the right word for a hospital, but the two unfortunate hospital goers. So that's definitely a nice little area at the top of the clock tower that can be pretty fun. Just down below that, we have the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, which has a table, chair, potions, glass case, book, desk with ink pot, and a quill, buildable lamp, and a blackboard. So there is a lot going on in here. Of course, we do have the chair. It's, it's kind of unfortunate that we don't get Mad-Eye Moody in this set. I feel like we should have had the teacher for this room. I believe Mad-Eye Moody is the teacher for this room. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys are going to roast me in the comments. But something cool about about this room though is the book here which you can actually open up and you're gonna be able to reveal a very nice little print there very nice you can even uh, read the top side there I'm not good at cursive anymore I was taught that in second grade we were gonna need cursive for the rest of our life and I haven't used it since second grade so that's a pretty interesting tidbit there very relevant to the review anyway the blackboard there says moody and it's got some different numbers on there as well as a spider Kind of interesting, but that's everything in the dark arts classroom. Very nice job by like a lot of cool little details in there. And finally, down below, we just kind of have the entrance way to the clock tower. We have also a chest here. There's nothing in the chest, but if we open it up, I'll be able to show you. There is nothing. Schrodinger's chest, nothing in there. And we have like a little flame fountain thing going on over there with a blue flame, which is a really cool piece. So that is like the main three decks of the Great Hall. Moving over here, we have Dumbledore's office, which has a chair, a desk with ink pot and quill. It also has the pensive and up above we have the sword of Gryffindor, which is actually, you know, not to uh, be confusing, but it's actually just like a normal Lego sword. So yeah, sorry guys, it's not the real sword of Gryffindor. Lego kind of tricks some people there, I think. We have the sorting hat there on the wall as a sticker. Very nice wall sticker in this set. Really uh, adds a lot of depth to this room, to be honest. You can see nice little details for his bookshelves. And um, uh, you might... Uh can't tell yeah no no really legible words there the other side is more of the same for the bookshelves and you can see just the real setup for his room here he can stand on his chair i suppose but he doesn't have legs to sit but it doesn't look that bad when he's standing anyway kind of looks cool like that his desk is nice as well very nice job for dumbledore's room and down below that we have the perfects bathroom which has a pretty nice watery area with like running water coming out of the taps there which look pretty cool and then we have a stained glass mermaid piece which actually looks pretty cool unfortunately uh, you might have thought it was a real lego uh, print no it is a sticker but still looks very nice from either side so on to our final section it's like the yule dance or yule ball not really sure but they do have a christmas tree here which is a really nice design really clean pretty simple build and then we have actually a couple of like icy themed tables to kind of stick around wherever you want those will probably get lost to time if you give this to a kid obviously the rest of the set might get broken too but these are pretty easy to lose and honestly they're cool but i don't really care a lot about them other than maybe the christmas tree the cool part about this whole section though is going to be the whole dance area where you can have characters stand on these little circular pieces and you can actually have them dance with each other which i think is really neat the way this works is you literally just physically spin it there's no thing to like actually spin there's no mechanism other than just spinning it around which is kind of unfortunately usually they'll have like a spinner or something and make it easy to do but this set kind of lacks that so maybe that's something you could mod or change for yourself but 
It's not that terrible. I could just see it being a problem if you have figures on all four of the stands. I don't know. It just, it's just one of those small things, but it's not a huge deal to me at the end of the day. The feature itself actually works pretty dang well. It uses these new pieces that I feel like they introduced with the Lego Movie 2, and they actually work very nicely. You just have to be a little bit careful when building it if you want these all to line up correctly. Otherwise, you'll end up with these kind of looking like this, and then it looks really weird. So just be careful that you really align those correctly. You might have to take them off and put them back on a couple times but take the time to make sure you do it right so that it looks good nice icy details on that overall but that's pretty much it for the play with the set all the other stuff you can do really is kind of like dollhouse type things you can just set characters around and have them play with each other again it's not like a star wars set where you can have it fly around and shoot things and blow up and stuff like that so the set itself is really like a dollhouse and that's to be expected i wasn't really expecting much else when i came into this set let me give you my final thoughts and a rating on this thing. My final rating for this set is going to be a 9 out of 10. I rarely, if ever, will give a 10 out of 10, but this set pretty much qualifies as such. $90 for 922 pieces is more than fair. You have eight awesome minifigures in this set, all of which are exclusive to the set at the time being, although who knows, maybe in the future they will be released. You have some beautiful architecture on the clock tower, as well as some very nice printed pieces and very nice stickerage on the set. I like that word. I started using that recently. Nice extra accessories as well here on the side that are included. So overall, a very nice set. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section below. But I think this is an awesome set. Totally worth your $90 or better yet if you find it on sale if you're a big Harry Potter fan. Of course, this does connect with the Great Hall and Whomping Willow. So this will be a necessary addition to your collection if you plan to complete whatever LEGO's vision for the kind of playset Hogwarts castle that they're putting together or have been putting together over the past couple years and will continue to do so in the future. Comment down below what other additions LEGO should make to that type of set that it seems like they're putting together with the Great Hall, the Whomping Willow, and this thing. So anyway, if you enjoyed the review, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And that's all I have for you in today's review. You can check out my other Harry Potter Summer 2019 set reviews on my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.